Hi everyone, this is Moore. In this tutorial I'm going to share with you four tips for making better camera animation in Maya or any other 3D software. So the first tip is about reaction, camera reaction. We need to remember that the camera is an object that lives and exists in our scene. Just because we're working in a 3D environment doesn't mean we need to forget about the camera. So whenever an object gets close or flies by a camera, it helps if the camera reacts a little bit, like in this example over here. So when the ball got close to the camera and swing by it, I animate the camera just a little bit to give it life. As if there was someone holding the camera standing over there and was affected by the motion. The second tip is for tracking movement. So we need to remember again that there's actually a person holding the camera, right? So when a cameraman is supposed to track an object or a person, a character in a movie, it's not precise. It's hard to move the camera exactly at the same time as the character starts moving. In 3D, of course, it's possible. You can just program the camera to move exactly in the same pace and exactly in the same time as your object. But that doesn't seem real. That's not how it works in real life. So whenever we're supposed to track an object, like this ball in this example over here, it's always good to add a slight delay. So you see the ball is moving and the camera is trying to keep up. It starts moving a little bit after the ball starts moving. The second tip is for crane shots or boom shots. Since we're working in 3D, it's really easy to add an expensive boom shot, right? Well, first of all, I always recommend considering if you really need an expensive boom shot just because you can. Uh, sometimes we just try to get this crazy Hollywood look to our shots, even though we don't really need them. So assuming you did decide that you want a boom shot. In 3D, it's really easy to translate a camera upwards. So it is kind of like a boom shot. We just place a camera somewhere and then we raise it high and high and high as much as we want. And that's it. Well, in reality, when you actually use a crane, it looks a little different. I'll show you. So this is our crane over here. And this is what the crane sees on the left. So did you notice that as the crane is doing his movement, there's an arc to its movement. It's not just the camera going up. It's not just us taking the camera and raising it up. That's not the same thing. When you're using a crane, the camera moves in some kind of arc. So at first, it'll move in a nice way, but then as it gets close to the end, it kind of stays in the same height. And you can see on the left that at this point, it's kind of changing its direction. It doesn't look as smooth. But that's an authentic boom shot. That's how it looks when you actually use a crane. So if you're trying to create a realistic shot emulating real life, it's recommended to use an actual crane rig even when you're working in 3D and don't really need a crane because that way you achieve a realistic look. You can get that camera rig at creativecrash.com. I'll post a link in the description. The next tip is about handheld camera. So we remember that the camera is actually a live object in our scene. So we always need to consider and be aware of what's it standing on. Is it someone holding the camera? Is it standing on a tripod? Is it on a crane? We need to know these things. So if it's not standing on a tripod and there's actually a person holding it, maybe you want to add a little handheld motion to it. So say we want to film this thing over here giving the camera a very, very slight motion has the illusion of someone holding the camera. You don't need to animate it too much, just a little bit of translate, rotation, just enough to sell the shot.
All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you have something you want me to make a tutorial about, please write it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and visit our website at bloopanimation.com.